Hey everybody and welcome to uh, Table Saw Time with Mr. Kevin. Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of uh, Table Saw Time with Mr. Kevin. That's me. Woo! These episodes are going to be about just the table saw and the table saw only. So we're going to go over, uh, you know, table saw safety, how to make jigs, and mainly projects. I've got a lot of friends of mine that watch my videos and they're like, dude, I don't have half the tools you do. All I have is a table saw, a driver, and a sander. And I'm like, huh, well, that's what we're going to do. First couple of videos, we're going to go over basically safety and and how to you know make jigs and things like that. So we're all jigged up. Everybody will have what I have here for projects. We're gonna start making projects uh, like this, Ooh. just using the table saw without anything else. No joiner, no planers, no shapers, no band saws, blah, blah, blah. Just everything you can do on the table saw. And there's quite a lot of stuff you can do on the table saw. If you had one tool to buy, just one tool, I would definitely buy a table saw first before anything else. So we're gonna go over safety next so we all don't look like this at the end of the day. Because this is bad. This is good. That's even better. All right. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Bye. The six things you should do before you even get to the saw and turn it on is one, being the right, right frame of mind, the right attitude, don't be hungover. If you're in a bad mood, uh, kids kept you up all last night and you're half asleep, uh, whatever it is, don't use the saw if you're pissed off, angry, tired, um, hungover or whatever. Something's going to happen to you. You're going to hurt your saw or you're going to hurt yourself. And you're gonna wind up looking like this. And that ain't no good. Or like this, like that. And that ain't no good either. Just, uh, you know, if you have something else to do, do something else. Don't use your table saw. If you're pissed off, angry, uh, hungover, still high, whatever the hell it is, just stay away from your saw. Yeah, it's not worth cutting your fingers off for. So, well, yeah, that's the end of that. The other thing, uh, before you even start the saw, if you're afraid of doing something, or you're afraid of, uh, you know, like, I got to run a piece of plywood through and the last time I did it kicked back at me or flung it off the saw or whatever, or you got to cut a piece of A-quarter and you're afraid the last time you did it, you had something come off the saw and hit you or it flew out of your hands or you lost control of it and it went crazy or whatever it is, whatever that is, if you're afraid of your table saw, don't use the table saw. Put the blade down, turn the power off and practice, just practice running it through, whether it's a super long piece you know, some pieces you got to get actually back here and, you know, up you go. That happens. Piece of plywood, you know, putting plywood on the saw and running it through and keeping it up against the blade. It takes practice. So practice with the blade down, with the power off and save yourself a lot of headaches. Don't be afraid of the saw. Um, a lot of accidents happen just because people are like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, my God. Don't be afraid of the saw. If you're afraid of the saw, practice before uh, you actually turn the thing on and make your cut because... Uh, that's better for you. Practice makes perfect. It's, you don't learn it in like just by reading a book. You actually have to do it. Uh, there you go. All right, number two. No loose clothing, long hair, uh, dangly jewelry. Uh, get rid of it. Even sometimes rings. Uh, I've seen somebody got their hands smashed from a kickback with a ring on it, and the ring smashed the crap out of the guy's finger, and that was uh, yeah, no good. And so the last thing, if you can, um, when it comes to clothing, is get an apron. It helps uh, protect you from you know, dust and chips and stuff flying off. Uh, if something does come flying at you, this actually helps. It's an extra layer of uh, clothing to keep you safe from flying debris. And if you have a, uh, a measuring tape and you have pockets, you know, put it down where you, uh, it'll protect the parts down there. That's another thing on a two-tip Tuesday somewhere. If, a, if you're back here and a piece of wood comes flying at you and you're milling it and it goes, shrimp, and it hits you, and you got this thing, oh, oh good golly. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that. And you have a tape down below where, you know, it keeps everything uh, a little guarded. That's an extra plus. doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. You get hit down there, it ain't no good. Ooh. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, goggles and masks. So I, I wear glasses because uh, these are just cheaters. Uh, 125, whatever they are, reader cheater things. Um, but I wear them anyway. I wear this when I mill. Or I have, I have other goggles. I put these goggles on. And I've done this before on other two-tip Tuesdays. And if you're, if you're ever milling anything with lots of uh, knots in it, like cedar or pine or things of that nature, uh, put yourself on a mask. And then you can be like I am. Luke, I am your father, Luke. And then when you talk, you could uh, steam it up like a mad dog because this is what happens every single time when you wear a mask. 
So the other thing on Two-Tip Tuesday would be to put a fan behind you to blow in around your mask. Uh, that way you can actually see what the hell you're doing because when you're wearing a mask like this, um, sometimes it fogs up and uh, you got to be careful. So a, a fan behind you blowing through your mask will help. You know, stuff like knotty pine or cedar or something that has knots in it. Put a face mask on because you're going to get hit. Uh, might not happen right off the bat, but eventually a knot's going to come back and whack you in the head. And even with glasses on, you get hit right in the forehead with a knot doing 80 miles an hour. It hurts. Not good. So, you know, make sure you're wearing goggles or a face mask. Um, the other one is dust mask. And whether it's a 3M pad, dust mask, a little tiny thing like this. The little paper ones, they didn't work so good. But if you only have a paper one, then use that. Um, my favorite is this one right here. The RZ mask. They're not a sponsor. I don't have sponsors. The only people that sponsor me are you. So if you share this with your uh, friends and family and neighbors in the world, uh, I'd appreciate it. I don't have sponsors. I'm not going to ever try to sell you anything. So, uh, but the RZ mask is one of the most comfortable uh, masks there are, and you can replace the inside and all that stuff, and it works amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. I like that. All right, so that's my recommendation for dust masks. And the other thing is push stick. Uh, before you start, before you do anything, make sure you have push sticks that are pretty good. You can see this one's a little hammered, but I have uh, this many more. I just made these not too long ago. I got, uh, yeah, I got one good one, but at least I have some of these. So, you know, they get hammered pretty quick. I don't waste a lot of time. If you see my other things about push sticks or over here, the world's awesomest push stick or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, make sure you have them close. Push sticks are important to have. And you want to have a push stick before you need it. It's one of those things, like a gun. You want to make sure you got one laying around somewhere in case something happens. And that goes the same with the, with the push stick. Yeah. The last thing on my list of the six things to have before you even start your saw are a pair of gloves. And there's controversy over gloves. So back in the day, you know, they always told you uh, never wear gloves when you're uh, milling wood because uh, your fingers can get pinched. You can't grab onto stuff. Uh, it could get caught in a saw because it's dangling, right? I would never use these to mill with. Uh, that would just be dumb. Okay. Rubber gloves. Uh, no. Do they have grip? Sure. And they go way up here too. These are for my finishing. For staining crap. Uh, stain gloves. You wouldn't wear these gloves when you're milling wood. That'd just be dumb. The other thing you wouldn't wear is <laughs> these my old welding gloves. I, used to, I could weld. I weld stuff. You don't work with gloves like this when you're woodworking. Uh, don't be silly, all right? If you're gonna use gloves for milling, Atlas gloves, all right? I've heard countless people say, you shouldn't use gloves, it's dangerous, blah, 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 blah. These things will uh, save your grip. You won't have to have extensive surgery like I've had on both my hands. I've had two operations on this one and one on this one because I had carpal tunnel and uh, had a whole wrist replaced on this one because it got broke on a job. Here's a picture of it. Ah! Yeah, that's in there. They told me I'd never do woodworking again because, uh, yeah, uh, they're wrong. <laughs> but so, gloves. I always wear these gloves. Piece of eight quarter, I can hold it with either hand. Doesn't really matter because I can grip the damn thing. Okay, I can't do that with bare hands. I have to grab the crap out of it. Um, yeah, I always wear these when I'm milling plywood or solid stock. Uh, I'm not worried about them catching on anything. They're tight as hell. They're as tight as my own skin. And I'm getting old, so it's getting kind of saggy. So the last segment, we talked about six things you need. Well, we f I forgot one because I get busy. Don't. Seventh thing is ear, ear protection. Uh, I really like these ones. These uh, Thunder T3, uh, blah, 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 blah. Whoever makes these things. Uh, they work really good. You can't hear a damn thing. And uh, I've had these for years. You really want something to protect your ears. Those little things that plug into your ears, eh, they don't work so good. Um, but if that's all you have, it's better than nothing. These are my new favorite. Because you can't hear a damn thing with these on, and you can rock out at the same time. <laughs> 3M Work Tunes. Not a sponsor. Uh, you can go look it up on the Googles. They're very expensive. They're like 70 bucks or something like that. Uh, headphones. They work really good. Very important. That's the seventh thing you need before you even get on your table saw. Uh, sorry about forgetting that, but uh, duh. I get busy. All right, so we got all that done. Boom. So, let me put this down. Well, here's one more thing. See how my blade's up right here? Okay, this uh, is a no-no. Before you do anything, or after you've done something, or before and after, when you're done using your saw, make sure that blade is down, all the way down, not sticking up a little bit, 
not barely down. Make sure it's down just in case some kids come by and people, I don't know why they do it. They want to run their hand on a table saw. Ooh, and they cut themselves. So before I even turn the power on or anything like that, I check my area. <laughs> so I check the floor all the way around here. Make sure there's nothing on the floor that you're going to trip over. No uh, pets or small children of any kind before you start your saw. So I do that even before I turn the power on. I make sure that my floor is clear because when I'm working, I'm going to grab a hunk of wood. I'm going to put it in the saw and I'm going to mill. And I, I don't want to trip on anything. If you trip on anything with your hands full of wood and you hit the saw or anything can happen, that's not good. Number two, you always want to make sure that there's nobody behind you. Especially when you're milling, you want to make sure that people know that not to walk behind you. So tell everybody, hey, I'm going to be milling. Uh, please don't step behind me because uh, I've actually had little pieces of wood quarter by quarter fly off the saw and go right through that wall into the next room. Don't! I had a push stick like this. That was, I was cutting quarter inch little dados and I ripped one side. I flipped it over because I was in a hurry and ripped the other side. I did it twice. And the second time, since there was nothing there on my push stick, uh, it went, whoosh, grabbed the saw, grabbed it, and it went through all the way into the other room, which is my office on the other side of that wall. If a piece of wood will go through a hunk of drywall, it'll go through your skin. So that's very dangerous, especially if you have little children. So be careful. <laughs> Two things you want to remember always is make sure your insert is in there. All right. Some inserts just lay in place and click down. Make sure they're all the way clicked down. I've actually seen somebody uh, cut something and have their insert twist on them. And, and that was no good. And I don't know how that happened. That was like a freaky thing, uh, but it can happen. So always make sure your inserts are in very well. And the other thing about inserts, if you can use a zero clearance, which I have here, I don't know if you can see it. Zero clearance inserts are the best because all the other ones have open throats and little pieces of quarter inch get stuck down in there and stuff like that. So if you can and you can afford to, uh, or if you can make your own, uh, make yourself a zero clearance insert. This is for a 45 degree cut. Here's the back, here's the front. When I do my 45s, I use a zero clearance blade um, because it's safer than using this. And this is the original that it came with. See how big that is? I can get my pinky through there and that's probably a half inch or fatter. Um, if you're reeling wood and it gets stuck down in there and it goes down that hole, uh, then you got your piece of wood sticking out at you and then most people want to grab it. You never grab it. Just shut the saw off and then, yeah, and then pull it out once the blade has come to a complete stop. Yeah. So zero clearance is the best way to go for inserts. I'll just throw that in there for a two tip Tuesday. It's not Tuesday. So when you're milling, check your insert, make sure it's there. Zero clearance if you can. When you're setting up the height of your blade, always, and I've said it a million times on other videos, one tooth above. It's all you need. It's all you ever need. It's safe. Uh, it's safer than having it way up there. I don't care what people say. One tooth above is all you need, uh, period. End of story. The other thing you got to remember, and I've seen this happen, is people don't lock in their fences. They'll put it to a thing and they'll, they'll push it down, but they won't lock it. If you're not locked down and you got to mill something and the, it moves on you, <laughs> I've seen that happen. That is just the weirdest thing because uh, the people think they got it locked down or they forget and they just kind of slightly push it down and don't shove it all the way down. And they go to mill a piece of wood and they're like, Nyeh. next thing you know, whoop, here comes the board at you because you're trying to cut a 45 degree angle on your board. Not good. Always make sure your fence is locked down. Okay. You also want to make sure that everything on your tabletop is clear. And the other thing, if you put stuff on top of your, on top of your fence, see this, uh, I have a special gizmo that I do. Huh. Everything that's on my fence is Velcroed into place. If you have stuff sitting on top, like chalk and a pencil and other things, you, you can sometimes set it like that at a hard stop. Boom. Like that. And stuff goes flying. Um, if you're cutting something and you're cutting like this, you don't want everything flying into your blade when your blade's on. So you want to keep your table saw blade from getting hit by little metal objects like that. And you want to keep yourself from getting smacked in the head because that would just be silly. So I put Velcro on everything, <laughs> even my calipers. Here's the end of old Betsy over here. Old squeakers. I call her squeakers because he squeaks a lot. Uh, make sure your dust collector's hooked up because half the time, uh, this is disconnected because I have to move stuff in and out and I don't want to walk over it. And, uh, yeah, it's disconnected. So make sure you're just, you're, so make sure you're hooked up to your dust collector. Um, because once you start this thing and start milling, you're going to get a mess. So yeah. Whoops. <laughs> if you notice on this right here, I don't have one thing. 
on there that a lot of people uh, can't live without. <laughs> this is the flippy flapper cover and the riving knife. Uh, this is all personal choice. In the state of California, if you take this off and you have employees, you will get uh, ruined by the Cal OSHA. You have to have either a, a riving knife, a uh, cover like this that sits over, or the one that sits over the top that with a sucker on it, which would be better than this uh, thing right here. Oh, yeah. I've never used a riving knife in my entire life. Well, I've used once. I didn't use this one ever. This saw is eight or nine years old. I can't remember how old it is. I couldn't tell you when I bought it. I just, I love it to death. But this has never been used. It's very di dirty and you can see it's dusty. I've never used this once. I don't believe in them. They get in the way. When it's down here like this, I can't see the blade, so that's not good. Um, I can't use a push stick like I want to because it's kind of in the way. Little pieces get stuck in the plastic between the blade and I've seen that happen way too many times and I just don't use them. Um, don't do as I do. If you have one of these and you feel more safe using them, use them. Uh, I just don't. There's one thing that you don't want to do, and I wrote it on here. <laughs> Hands-free zone. I'm going to show you where the hands-free zone is. Hands-free zone. It's right here. It's your insert. The new inserts that you get from uh, Sar Sar Sarstop. Uh, sorry, they're not a sponsor, but Sawstop makes uh, them now in red. Ooh. And red's kind of cool because you can put it down here, and you could, when you're milling wood, keep your hands away from the red. Simple to remember, red is dead. And if you don't want to cut your fingers off and you don't want to look like this, or like be like this guy like this, um, keep your hands out of the hand-free zone. So, hands-free zone would be the red part of your insert if you have a red one. Uh, try to keep your hands out of there and practice milling uh, and getting used to that. And make sure you have a push stick ready to go around it. So on smaller pieces, smaller than an inch, so let's say you're cutting stuff that's uh, one inch or smaller, always use a push stick. Uh, through the hand-free zone and especially any pieces that are smaller than one inch I always use a push stick and I don't really recommend put using feather boards and all sorts of craziness So if you're doing something that's already square and flat and you know it is and all you want to do is put a dado in it Then use a feather board to push down or push in and that's the only reason I'd use a feather board If your board's all twisted and crazy Don't use a feather board to try to make it flat and straight and make a straight cut because it's just gonna come out like crap on the other side just uh, another little uh, Kevinism, Tippinism from uh, good old Mr. Kevin here. All right, all right. So cross cutting wood. <laughs> Here's the biggest no no that you can ever do. You got shelf board like this higher. All right, you got a straight edge on it, square edge, whatever, and you're gonna cut something that's uh, wider than it is long. I would cut this like this, no problem. I have no problem doing a cut on the saw like this because I've done it a million times and I know push down, push down hard. Have it wide enough, cross cut. If you're just beginning, and you're like, I'm just gonna cut three inch piece on this board right here like this, and you think you're gonna cut that, uh, what's gonna happen is this board's gonna twist. The tail off's gonna come and get you because it's tail out over here, and you can hold it with this hand and say, I'm gonna pull it out this way, and I'm gonna push this through. But when this board wiggles like this, as soon as it does that, it's gonna come back, and there's videos on there. Where people almost lose their fingers and crap because they purposely like, or this is what happens when you get a kickback and twist it. If your board is wider than it is long and you try to cut it like this without a, without a miter gauge or a sled, you're asking for trouble. And we'll go over this in two shakes of lamb's tail. We'll go over that in a minute. Um, so never cross cut anything that's wider than it is long. Um, even if it's like this, you think, oh, I could do that, you know. Uh, all it takes is just a little turn, and it's coming back and it's gonna nail you in the gut. This is the biggest culprit in the world right here. So they got themselves a piece of quarter inch plywood. I'm just gonna cut this off like this and I just need a little piece. Quarter inch is the biggest culprit I've ever seen for wider than, you know, something that's wider than it is long, somebody thinks you're gonna cut it, whether it's the tail off that gets hit or this piece and it somehow twists and comes right back at you. Uh, yeah, so you don't think it's gonna hurt, it hurts. <laughs> so if you're using miter gauge to cross cut things, which is good because it's always nice to have that. Make sure that your, uh, your fence is missing the blade. Uh, a quarter inch is good. It doesn't have to be that close to it, but uh, the closer the better. It's just uh, safer. And that way if you, if you have to square something up and you're making a cut, you just go ahead and make the cut and done. But if you're gonna make a five inch cut or a six inch cut or whatever, and this is a piece that you want, 
do not cut it with this on this side. So if you're cutting like this, burp, okay, doesn't matter if you're pushing this up against here or not. Uh, this is the improper way to cut. I'll just do it like this and set my saw to five inches and make a cut. And then take this as your cut. Because what can happen, and it still can happen, is you've trapped that wood in between there. And if it's, all it has to do is turn slightly and it's going to come back and hit you. Get yourself a sled. Use your sled to cut down things that are smaller. Or use a chop saw to make smaller cuts. Don't entrap the wood uh, in here. Don't care how small it is. Don't do it. It's dangerous. It's not good. Another little thing to... Uh, learn how to do and practice is to shut your saw off. Sorry about that. The camera shut off and uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't realize it until I went to go edit all this stuff and I'm like, oh my God, what the hell? It just went, yow -de -yow -de -do. and that was the end of that. Good golly. All right, I'm going to try to do this calm and collect. That'll never happen. Okay. Two more things to talk about and we're totally done. Promise. So the first thing I want to talk about today is how to turn off your table saw with your knee. Knee. Table saw switch. Magic. So when would you use this procedure, you're asking, Mr. Kevin? When would you do this? Well, I do it all the time. I turn off my saw just out of habit with my knee constantly. Sometimes when I don't even want to. <laughs> that kind of sucks. So the first reason, if, you, if you're milling a piece of wood and you have an emergency, something happens, and you're running a hunk of plywood through. There we go. Run a hunk of plywood through and you're milling, milling, milling and something happens. You get hit in the eye. Uh, you're milling a piece of uh, pine and or cedar and you get hit in the head with a knot and you're not wearing your face mask like Mr. Kevin told you two a minute ago. Uh, and you're like, oh man, you think you're bleeding. Uh, don't let go of the wood because you don't want to do that. Um, what you want to do is you want to just shut off the table saw as fast as possible. And the closest thing there is your, is your knee. So I'm milling a piece of wood, da, 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 boom, oh man, oh, I'm holding one hand here, I've shut off the saw with my knee, I'm waiting for the table saw blade to stop moving before I do anything, then you can go run off and see how bloody you are, or not, and then hopefully uh, you don't hurt yourself too bad, but things like that happen, it's a good practice to do that, if you have a kickback and you get hit or something happens, you don't want to let go of the piece of wood or have to fumble around with uh, one hand, you know, if you got a piece of wood sticking out your head, you got a stick sticking out your head like this, <laughs> and then you, uh, you know, shut it off with your knee. And hopefully it's not a big stick like this, because that would just suck. And if it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, the timber bind would be the other one. So you got a big piece of cherry, and somehow it wants to bind up on you, and you're running a piece through. So the first thing I'd like to tell you is that if you have your riving knife in, something I don't use, uh, that will help prevent this from binding and pinching on your saw blade to the point where it wants to just stop your motor. If you have a five horsepower motor like Mr. Kevin does, uh, it won't stop. It'll just keep going. <sighs> yeah. So a riving knife usually stops your timber bind. But if you have a problem and sometimes, sometimes something weird happens, you know, it'll, your wood will start arching up and it'll start bouncing on the saw. And if you're new to woodworking, you don't know what the hell's going on. You don't want to pull your piece of wood out. You don't want to keep shoving it through. You just want to shut the thing off with your knee, click, and uh, hold on to your piece of wood until everything stops moving. Your table saw is done moving and you can remove it uh, safely. Okay, and that's that. If you're milling a piece of wood and it starts binding up to the point where it's smoking and the blades not moving and the belts are squealing and all that neat stuff, um, the first thing you want to do is stop pushing. Stop pushing uh, completely and then shut your motor off. Don't pull it out backwards because it's liable to catch a hunk of wood and come shooting back at you. And that'd be no good. Um, you don't want to lift it out because the same thing might happen. It might get stuck sideways on there. And all it has to do is turn a little bit and come back and hit you in the head. And that ain't no good. So just uh, run your piece of wood here like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the blade up. Check it out. I'm going to do it without a dust collector. No. Dust collector. Magic button. All right. So here we go. Up one tooth. <laughs> All right. So... You're going to be cutting a hunk of wood, and I'm not using a push stick. Uh, you should use a push stick. I've, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, here we go. All right, we're on. We're running. Something happens. Oh, crap. I say it bound up. Just don't move. Hold it in place until it comes to a complete stop. And you can either pull it out, lower your blade, or... Crawly. So the whole trick is, uh, when it's in here like that, don't keep pushing it forward. If it's all bound up, just stop. Stop and shut it off. Don't try to lift it out. Wait till the blade comes to a complete stop. 
complete stop, and then you can either pull it out, which sometimes works, or you can lift it out. And if, if it's really pinched on there and it's a long board, you might actually have to take a little shim and stick it down there and pry it open or a little pry bar and just to remove it from your blade. You don't want to twist it or you know, pull it out because you don't want to bend your blade a little bit or break a piece of wood or whatever. So uh, timber bound wood, stop the blade, wait till it comes to a complete stop and uh, then deal with it. All right. <laughs> any, any, any questions? Uh, okay. So the other thing that happens, uh, let me see if I can do this. So if you're not using a zero clearance fence, well, sometimes your piece will get stuck down in the gullet of your insert or the throat or whatever you want to call it down in there. You've seen it, it comes up and flaps around in your face. So we're just going to call the piece of wood that comes off there a tail out from now on. If you ever hear me say the tail out, I mean this, this piece that's left over. Ooh. When you're cutting something that's, uh, let's say it's two inches wide like this is, and you're cutting it an inch and five eighths, you're going to have a little tail out right here. It's about an eighth of an inch. A normal insert on a table saw that isn't zero clearance, these little pieces have a tendency to go straight down the saw and get stuck. The other thing they do if you have a zero clearance fence is they tend to uh, shoot back at you um, if your push stick looks like this. <laughs> and we're going to attempt to do that right now. I'm going to use a push stick. Oh, this might be good. Ah, see how it picked up speed? See how it picked up speed a little bit? So what I'm talking about is usually it'll, it'll do this. Oh crap! If you have a piece of wood that's jammed down in your throat of your insert, never go and grab for it while the saw's running. Um, let it come to a complete halt and, uh, and uh, let it, uh, everything stop. Okay, never reach for a piece of wood. Never. All right, push sticks, when to use them, when not to use them. Now this is different for everybody, but myself, if it's under an inch, if the board that I'm cutting is narrower than one inch, I use a push stick. Okay? Oh if it's three inches for you or four inches or whatever it is, uh, I would say for most people to start, if it's, if you're cutting a piece wider than your insert, and here's the magic no hand zone right here, right? If it's, uh, that wide, however wide that is, that is three inches. Uh, I'd say you're probably okay, let's try it. And do the same thing, I'm pushing down like this and pushing over. Okay, I'm over there, I'm gonna take this and boom, shove it that way. This hand never goes for the saw. Never reach for a piece of wood when it's right on the blade. I don't care if it's this wide and you try to grab it, uh, no. So, try it again. This time I'm going to use this Johnson. Okay, here we go. I'm going to push it through. Kick this out with a heel. I got Okay. That is the safest way to do it. That I know of. When you're doing it by hand, make it a little bigger so I don't freak people out. Okay, when you're doing it by hand, I'm going to push down like this. I'm going to keep my hand like basically like this, like it's a push stick. Okay. Right. Push stick hand. And as I'm feeding it through, I actually, I'm not, I never put my thumbs down below the wood. I always stick my hand the same way when I'm milling. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you a different technique that I do also as well. I'm going to make this a little bigger so I have a little piece. All right, here we go. All right, kick it out with your hand like that. Then come over with this hand and get it. This time I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna use my thumb. I don't know if you can be able to see this or not because it'll be way up there, but here we go. I'm clear of it. I just take my thumb and I spread it out like this, then I come across. Wow. That only works for small little pieces, short pieces. Uh, you don't wanna do that with anything longer than like two feet. I never reach with this hand when this is over here. I never reach when it's on the blade because if you just tap that once and this comes up, it's gonna come up and take you out or it's going to shoot across the room and hit your kid or dog or whatever. So I've seen a lot of people with miter gauges with the stops on here. Ooh. Let's say they have a stop on here and from here to here it's uh, 12 inches or whatever it is and they're going to make a cut, right? And they, uh, they make the cut and I'll do it and they leave the little piece there and they keep doing that. Leaving these pieces here is dangerous um, and you should never reach for them. All right, let, me, let me do it. Okay. I just, 
See how just leaving them around there? Did you see that one just move? <laughs> that blade creates wind. And uh, weird things can happen. If you're a person who cuts uh, things the size on their miter gauge that has a fence and a stop on it, make sure that all the offfall that's on this side of the blade, you don't let it pile up. It's dangerous, not good. So push sticks, very important thing to have. Always have one around. For me, I cut anything that's under an inch, I use a push stick. For you, it might be three inches, might be four inches, might be two inches, I don't know. Whatever you feel comfortable with, bleh. whatever you feel comfortable with, you do you, because you know your limits, I don't. I know my limits and uh, yeah, I forgot them yesterday, so <laughs> oh well. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. All right, well, thanks for watching the uh, Table Saw Time with Mr. Kevin. Uh, the safety is now over. I'm sure there's more safety stuff I'll think of uh, when we're working. And I'll tell you as we're building stuff, hey, watch out for this or watch out for that. But for the most part, I'm not talking about it no more. <laughs> yeah, thank me very much. All right. All right. Well, I'd like to thank all the, all the people who have subscribed to my channel. I had 140 the other day. And uh, it's not a million, but it's like, it's a, like a million to me. I appreciate it. Get 12 more every, if we got 12 more every month, like I've been getting, uh, by the time I'm 85, I might have uh, a thousand. All right, peoples. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, bling, flang, the bang, bang. <laughs> that was a big one. Oh my God. Share this with your friends. Share it with the world. Share it with everybody. Cause that's the only way I uh, get around. You gotta share it with your friends. All right. You have an awesome day. Go outside and play hug somebody you love. Cause Aww. that's important. You be safe out there and I'll see you next time on Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. That's me. And thanks for watching Table Saw Time with Mr. Kevin. That's also me. And stay tuned for the uh, Curved Cabinets of Bembo coming up next. <laughs> All right, peoples. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. And I don't know what to throw at you. This is kind of getting silly now. Here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit you with a piece of wood. Ready? <laughs> A bad a bad a bad a swing bad a bad a and here we go. To recap, five the six things you should do before you uh yeah as I said before the six things you should do don't be hungover hungover one a hungover practice doing that with a saw blade down okay practice makes perfect so dust mask dust good golly. I can't speak today. So dust masks are very, dust masks, dust masks. Practice makes perfect. You must say dust masks 10,000 times. Dust masks, du dust masks. Practice makes perfect. A max of a dust mask, dust mask, dust mask, dust mask. You must say dust mask, dust mask, dust mask. So it's a dust mask. So on your face like this, protects your lungs and makes you live a nice, healthy, long life. Uh, if you don't use them, you're going to die a miserable death. Practicing shutting off stuff with your feet. With your feet. <laughs> Sugar. Sorry about that. Right. Boom. Don't flinch. Don't run away. Kicks back. Kickbacks are like just sitting there. Boop. Remember to be safe. And when you're done, put down the damn blade. <laughs> don't want nobody sitting on that thing. That would hurt. <gasps> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank me very much.